Good morning everyone. In this video we're going to take a peek at my new Mendel 90 3D printer, which is fully enclosed, and as well we're going to look at my old Orca 3D printer. Happy Hallow's Eve everyone. Tomorrow's Halloween, it's like my favorite non-holiday of the year. Um, but here, or this morning, we're here to talk about two printers. Well, not really two, we're going to talk about mainly about this one. This is my old Orca design, and this is my new Mendel 90. This, obviously, it looks a lot different. It's not a regular Mendel 90. It's a, well, it is a regular Mendel 90 with a enclosure built around it. Uh, the Mendel 90 frame was designed by Knophead. I'll put links below the video of everything that has to deal with that. Um, the frame was designed by another user on Thingiverse. I'm sorry, I can't remember your name right now. Once again, details will be below the video. Um, but it's pretty cool because it uses 3D printed frame pieces and then uh, acrylic or cardboard or dye bond or whatever you wanted to use for the frame ends. I ended up using some acrylic that I found out of the dumpster, uh, sanded it down because it was super scratched, so I used some 220, sanded both surfaces uh, to kind of give it a frosted appearance, and then I was able to uh, use it for all the panels. And it looks pretty slick actually for costing me zero dollars. Um, the machine itself, the Mendel, uh, here printed every part you see or every white part you see in PLA. I chose PLA because it was easy to print without a heated chamber. But printing these big long beams uh, would kind of require a heated chamber, but I needed a heated chamber to build the parts, so it's kind of a chicken and the egg problem. I was talking with PLA because it, I didn't foresee being able to get hot enough to deform the PLA anyways, even when I was doing ABS prints. Uh, this is the second Mendel 90 I built, and this is now my primary machine. Uh, inside I have a Mark III heated bed, which is just the PCB or your standard PCB heated bed, but it has an aluminum uh, or aluminum cladding on the back, three millimeters of aluminum. So you, if you run it upside down, you don't have to use a piece of glass with it. I'm trying to reduce the amount of moving mass on the uh, Y axis because if I reduce the moving mass, I can print faster. So I've just gone with a top surface dressing of hairspray, which works just fine for the PLA. I haven't had crazy luck with ABS with it, but I also haven't printed ABS now with the new inside closure or enclosure. So that might have helped quite a bit. Um, other than that, it's got uh, aluminum flex couplers for the Z axis. I went with M6 instead of M8 for the Z, which I think was an upgrade by Knophead uh, somewhere after he designed this machine, anyways. Uh, it just reduces the Z banding effect because it lets the 8mm rail uh, work more than the uh, six, millimeter, 6 millimeter threaded rod to move the carriage around. I blocked off the back intake port with just some black cardboard construction paper because I don't have a fan there and obviously if I'm trying to build a heated chamber it would make no sense to pump cold air into it. Uh, the top you can see is a standard fan carriage. The fan blades are white because I initially had the 40 millimeter fan which I jammed a set of tweezers into and snapped fan blade off. So I jumped into Fusion 360, designed a, designed a new fan blade, printed it on the machine, popped it on the fan and we're back in business. The filament actually comes in from top feeder, as you can see in my office, um, and I put any roll of filament that I'm working on. That's the gist of it. I don't know what else to say. I'm probably already rambling, so if you have any questions, just post them in the comments below, and I'll try to get to them. Other than that, I will see you guys next week. Adios. Take care. Bye.